Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is Shadow 333, bringing you a match between Kane and the Sponge on Battle for Planet 14. Let us begin. This is a map that, as you can see, is not symmetric. Not actually uncommon for Zero K maps. A lot of them aren't perfectly symmetric, and some of them, like this one, are very notably asymmetric. Also very hilly. I wouldn't be surprised if spiders were used, but it looks like shields versus cloakies is how this matchup is going to go. So the Sponge going for Cloaky Bots, while Kane goes for Shield Bots. Both players very quickly getting their opening Metal Extractors going, and also very quickly morphing to Beam Laser Energy Cell for the Sponge, and Energy Cell alone for Kane. Not a bad idea. Not something a lot of people consider is that you don't actually have to have all of the modules for that level in place. Admittedly, it does mean that his commander is not a free light, or not free, but not a mobile light laser turret, but it does mean that he gets his energy economy up for that much less cost. Because the metal cost of Morph is entirely dependent on the number of modules that you have at a particular level. Both players setting up their scouting forces, and neither player looks like they're going to be too surprised what the other one's doing. I mean, Shield versus Cloakies, not at all unusual on this map. I mean, Spiders, like I said, can work in this map due to the hills, but Shield versus Cloakies is a pretty typical matchup. You just don't get... Anyway, oh. Kane is to the north, and the Sponge is to the south. It's the Sponge and Kane. Forgot to point that out, I'm sorry. Anyhow, Kane is... Well, he is defending pretty well against that Glaive, but not well enough. Looks like the Glaive managed to win an uphill fight against the Bandit. Interestingly done there. The Sponge's Glaive managed to take out a Metal Extractor and almost goes to the Convict. Did not quite realize that was there. While he himself is getting harassed, Bandit coming in here. The Light Laser Turret is able to take it out before it deals any damage. The Sponge really has nothing to worry about. Though, the Sponge... he Actually, they're both even in economy. They both have exactly the same number of metal extractors and power plants, but Kane is still moving a bit ahead. He does have one more metal extractor now, having rebuilt the one that was destroyed in harassment. More glaives coming in, while some bandits stream up. It looks like Kane is not building quite as quickly. He's focused a bit more on construction, while the sponge... No, they appear to be evenly focused on construction. Glaives gets just that much cheaper. And in a battle off-screen, we see the Glaives manage to take care of those bandits without too much issue. And Light Laser Turret not able to get through that hill before getting attacked by the Glaives, but I think the Glaives will go down. Yes, they will go down with the bandit support. Nice try for second harassment there, but Kane has locked down his main base for now, until... Basically until Rockos come in. Actually, even Warriors would do just fine. Until Rockos and Warriors come in and start actually being able to pound down those Light Laser Turrets. But by that point, the players will have expanded more towards the, well, the center of the map and possibly the sides of the map. More likely the size of the map, actually. This area here is actually quite open. This metal extractor, in range, the glaives could... If they go in between these light laser turrets, and it looks like they will go around them. They don't know about this one, but they will soon find out. And this glaive will be able to start taking out the metal extractor. The second one will go down, but the first one... It's also going down. Why is it letting itself go down? No, it is... Well, I shouldn't say letting itself. That was under Sponge's control. Sponge losing a glaive, but taking out a metal extractor, that's... That's kind of worth it. That's keeping... I mean, Kane is still ahead in economy, but a lot of that is reclaim. So, actually, I guess in that case you would want to kill more than one Metal Extractor at a go. Still, that's two Glaze for Metal Extractor, not a terrible exchange. Not a great exchange, not a terrible exchange either. The Sponge is slightly ahead in static economy, but he does have... Actually, he hasn't taken advantage of the reclaim here. Not a whole lot, but still something. There is... There's really any... I don't think there's any reclaim on this map other than what your opponent throws at you. So right now, the Kane does have that as a bit of an advantage. The fact that the Sponge's harassments did end in destruction. Kane is taking advantage of that, and he is expanding towards the center. He's expanding quite a bit faster than the Sponge is. Or at least quite a bit more daringly than the Sponge is. He is trying to take the map control. Warrior doing what it can. Getting rid of one of the bandits. Should be able to take care of the bandits without too much issue. It's the Rogue that's the big issue. The Glaive's coming in for support. Actually, even the bandits are a bit of a problem. As we can see, bandits are powerful enough that they... It's more the... F the fire speed. The lasers just move that much faster than the plasma balls from the glaives. The glaives plasma paintballs don't quite, and at the same speed as the warriors, and they don't quite come in as quickly as nice little laser packets from the bandits. I mean, I'm not sure how much difference that makes. It's probably just, it's probably minute, but it's probably just enough that it would leave one warrior slightly at a disadvantage against bandits than against glaives. Granted, bandits do deal more damage per unit regardless. 
More glaives coming up. The sponge continue with these glaives. He does have glaives worse. He does have Zeus is actually coming up. As soon as this next batch of units comes up, Zeus's will be up, and that might be a little early. It probably will work, but it might be a little early regardless. I don't see any roaches coming in. No, no roaches are being built up or planned to be built up. It's entirely bandits and rogues with some builders thrown here and there. And looks like right now we see Kane is definitely ahead in metal extractors. He has six metal extractors, two... Actually, wait. Hold on a sec. Maybe he's not ahead. Eight metal extractors for the sponge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I missed that one there. Eight metal extractors. Actually, it's even. Static economy is even. Kane is simply using reclaim a lot better. Taking full advantage of the fact that he did take out a bunch of the sponge's units. And continuing to push in. The center of the map is controlled by Kane. Harassment coming in here for the sponge. He's trying to get rid of the laser turret. He will lose. Losing a third of his bandits, or third of the glaives of the laser turret. Another bandit going down in the process. But these glaives are doing a great job. They are taking care of all these wind generators. And this metal extractor is also open. Will be going down in a moment. I think one of the glaives will die in the splash, though. No, not quite. Though I think the splashes will end up killing one of these glaives at some point. They are very close to the explosions. Wind generators being destroyed are not harmless to the units around them. Much like in real life. Though, admittedly, I've never actually gone around with a plasma paintball gun shooting wind turbines. Never done that at all. Not once. We have hydroelectric power where I live. And Glaive's getting a bit too greedy. Two more going down. However, that harassment was definitely quite powerful. Pulling back Kane's economy. Not quite in line with the sponges when you account for reclaim. But still pulling it back. Giving the sponge a bit more breathing room. And he is going for a gunship plan. He is switching factory. While Kane is not. Kane is not going for an additional factory at this point. He's apparently going more for... Well, he's going more for construction from the looks of it. Is he... He is not speeding this factory up at all. It is just using a standard 10 metal. Looks like he's focused primarily on on building up. Construction around the map rather than focused on building units. Which will pay off, especially since this side of the map is basically uncontested, other than that one harassment from the sponge. Though the right side of the map is being taken by the sponge, it's not as decisively as I'm sure you would like. Though, actually, this is doing a pretty good job. He is taking... He is taking it. Never mind, he is actually starting to make it decisive. With these glaives, doing a great job. Getting rid of Convict, getting rid of another metal extractor, and getting rid of... Pretty much all the map control Kane had on the east side of the map. That's pretty effective, actually. And Kane coming in with thugs, bringing out the big guns. A Zeus should be ready, and there should be actually a couple Zeuses by now. There is a Zeus. Another couple of warriors coming up, and... A Black Dawn for the Sponge. Should eat up a lot of his metal, although he still has... Okay, there is the caretaker I was looking for. While the cane... Sorry, not the cane, just cane. Is getting... Continuing to build up, he's... Getting more harassment and trying to take the south side of the map. So the map is kind of split east-west, but... Kane still has an advantage, taking the north side. And a tick coming in, not able to do any real damage. Glaives are prepped, waiting to attack. And all the main... Assault units for the sponge waiting in his base. Moving out the warriors. Not sure if he's going to move with the Zeus's. There he is. And these should be able to take out the center of that fairly effectively. There's not a lot of mobile units in the way. And these laser turrets, while they do overlap, I think the Zeus's will be able to deal enough damage to stun them. To stop them from actually taking out everything that comes through. And warriors can take care of light laser turrets without too much issue. Admittedly, taking care of five or six in a row is a bit of a problem. But one at a time isn't too bad. So... Battle should be joined pretty much now, and Rogue coming in, starting it off, getting some hits on the Zeus's. And here's the, st okay, the Stinger here, that's going to be a big deal. In fact, that's, ah, that's where the build power is going. Kane fully more or almost fully morphed his commander, getting tons of build power on it, and that is where all that metal has been going out. That explains where Kane has not been floating. And the Stinger has been built up, but a Black Dawn able to take out some units not dealing a huge amount of damage. Another shot coming in, taking out a rogue, but not much else. That Black Dawn needs to get closer to the Stinger as the Stinger is distracted. Although it is distracting the Stinger quite effectively, these Zeus is able to take out some of the light laser turrets and the Black Dawn doing what it can. Taking actually a big chunk out of Kane's commander, but also getting a chunk taken out of it as well. EMP able to stop the Stinger just in time before it deals any me. Well, she is still dealing some damage right in the middle of the firing cycle as it got EMP'd. But going down that Zeus, 
And with those defenses down, looks like the sponge is going to take out Kane's commander. There's two warriors coming in. We'll take it out, getting rid of that commander and all of Kane's build power. Well, most of it. Actually, these caretakers got built up about two or three minutes ago, so that will be fine. Kane won't be starting to float right now. Another Black Dawn is being built up by the Sponge, and the first one coming back to repair. Rector should be repairing it. Not sure why it's not doing so. Once that's done, that'll be great, but the center of the map is what's the real story being taken out by the Zeus here. More assault units need to come in and take out the rest of these laser turrets and the rest of the economy because Kane is harassing along the east side of the map and will be taking out everything that the Sponge has. Like I said, the Sponge's map control on the east side of the map was not decisive. Most of his units were over to the center of the map trying to take out what Sponge had and the shield stopping the Black Dawn's major assault. Enough thugs there to block everything off. The Black Dawn quite powerful. When the shields get in the way, it does not matter. Now two Black Dawns. Two Black Dawns, if this one got repaired, would be very effective. But just one on its own, not able to get through the shields. Which is the real problem, however, it doesn't matter. This thug, out of shields, out of health. Still, the east side of the map being destroyed, and the sponge is halfway behind an economy compared to Kane. Kane's economy is mostly static, actually. He is not... he's hardly reclaiming anything. This is pretty much entirely static economy. All these corpses here have not been touched. He just happens to have that... well, that much power infrastructure. It's this fusion plant here that's pushing forward a bunch of power along all these metal extractors and increasing their output. Which, for even a few metal extractors is enough to have, well, give him 40 metal income total. The sponge with only 20 metal income is falling behind fast. He doesn't really have a military advantage. All he can really do is take advantage of Kane being somewhat overextended. These metal extractors are completely undefended. The ones in the center are partially defended. The laser turrets will go down to a few warriors and a few Zeuses. And this tick right here even will be especially effective. A bunch of Vandals, nicely in place to get rid of that Black Dawn, should have come forward, and it is being repaired, finally. Rocco's and Zeus is coming in. The Zeus, like I said, a couple Zeus's alone could take care of all these laser turrets, all these metal extractors, especially the ones that are undefended down here. That'll be huge. Rocco starting the fight against the... Oh, against the convicts, actually. The convicts nicely shielding everything else that Kane has. Warriors coming in to try to take care of that. Getting blocked up again by the shield, but... It doesn't care, going for the bandit instead, and that will really not be the fight. The fight's going to start when everything is close enough that it actually matters, but it looks like Kane does not have most of his military units here. He does have a Roach coming in, and this Tick Trap not in position. Though, the Convict's going down, one of them, go very both of them very quickly going down. No Raiders really take care of this, however, this Roach, one of the Roaches will take care of this Warrior. The other one looks like it's going, trying to help defend here, set up a trap. While thugs push forward, and Tick coming in! Tick will disable two of the thugs, but the Zeus follow-up will have to come in quite quickly. And two of the thugs are coming in, nicely getting rid of one of the roaches. However, a second roach will probably take care of them. They look like they will be distracted in the process. And are they going to be distracted? Yes, they are being distracted. However, the roach not coming in in time. The roach actually looks like it's going to go off against these glaives. And if it goes off too soon, it'll take care of everything here. But the glaives, they're not aware of this roach being here. The Roach getting out of the precarious position that would have caused to destroy its comrades and able to get rid of the Zeus's. There we go, getting rid of one Zeus, heavily damaging the other. And a Racketeer coming in to try to finish it off. No additional factors for Kane. He is very confident about using shields, and so he should be. He has full map control. At this point, it's just a matter of pressing it in and taking out the Sponge's base. A Crow being built up. I do not approve of this. I do not agree with using a Crow at this stage in the game. He really should be pushing more towards Cloakies. Admittedly, I can kind of see why he's doing that. Or Banshees, actually. A ton of Banshees, if he gets rid of the Vandals, would work. It's the Vandals that would stop that from working, though. The Black Dawn, however, the burst damage just gets stopped by the shields. And a couple shields, not a big deal. But these Vandals are able to take up the rear. Taking care of this one Black Dawn, it might be able to get back in time to repair. Actually, it will be able to. Both of them able to get out of there in time. But still, map controls decisively Kane's. And he is moving in for the kill. Or at least so he, so he appears. He's definitely blockading everything. He's keeping a contain on the sponge. But if this crow gets out... Well, it won't really do too much. The vandals... Actually, it might do a fair bit. If it gets in the right position, it could actually start taking care of the vandals. Eight vandals against a crow. Especially with ground support. I think the ground support is going to be the... That's going to be the deciding factor. However, the racketeers should be able to disable enough of it that it won't matter too much. This... 
Although their missiles not being homing is going to be a slight drawback. The warrior able to move fast enough to avoid the brunt of the damage. Actually avoid all the damage. Microing around, or automatically getting around this thug here. That is avoiding the racketeer shots as well. And a tick. Not well positioned. Only able to take out two of the rogues. The thugs were the main target. It needed to block off those so their shields were disabled. And it did not do so. However, Zeus's are coming in. A couple Zeus's will be enough to take care of that. But at this point, Kane really just has too much of an army to actually be dealt with at this point. They are overextended slightly. The Black Dons actually do have a chance to take care of this. This crow still... How long does it have? It's three minutes left before it's built. Yeah, this is not going to matter in this game. I highly doubt it's going to last that long unless Kane lets it. The Zeus is stunned and the thugs will be able to kill it as soon as they manage to aim enough to do so. No, I should do close to the episode of the attack, but it doesn't matter. The sponge has surrendered, realizing he can't do anything with that game. I really don't know why he went for that crow. I really don't. Crows are kind of game enders if you really know you've won, but not comeback tools. Not by a long shot. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll have another match shortly, so stay tuned, everyone.